Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the very first episode of Community Game Development on the Frag Dolls channel, uh, the Twitch TV channel, might I say. My name is Kim, aka Saber from the Frag Dolls, and I co-host this show along with my friend Carrie Allen. Carrie, say hi! Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Carrie. I currently work at EA, and uh, today we're going to write some pretty awesome code. It's really good to have you guys here. Yes, yes. So, before we dive into the code, let me give you a quick... Uh, uh, explanation of what this show is about. So the premise of community game development is to provide a fun, interactive way for people to learn about game development and coding. So Carrie and I came up with this idea last summer uh, and we said, you know, wouldn't it be really cool to create a show that taught people how to code games? You know, you could show the code, you could show how each piece pertains to something in the game, and then change the code to show viewers how it's all connected. So we kept talking about the concept, and eventually we thought, well, if this were a live stream, then viewers could tell us what they wanted to learn and what parts of the code we should change, or ideas on how to modify the game, or create entirely new games right on the spot. So we really like this idea, and because of game development, or because game development can be really interactive and interpersonal, uh, we, we wanted to allow the viewers to both learn and create at the same time, and it was all really appealing to us. So that's where the show is now. Um, it's a place where we show game code and explain what it means, and we also create with the help of the community. So if there's something you want to see done in the game, type it in chat, let us know, uh, and we will try and get to it. Um, so you can also code along with us. If you go to www.comgamedev.com, actually let me copy and paste that right into chat. Go there, click on Forums, and then Episodes, and you'll find a post for April 2013. This is where you can find the source code, and uh, we'll be using it in today's episode. So just download that, or, yeah, download it, open it up, and follow along right with us. There are also two other tools that you will need to open that code and code along with us. So the first is Visual Studio C Sharp Express 2010, which this is the code, or the link right there in chat. So go there, it's a free program that helps you code games in C Sharp. Um, so download that first and install that first. And once you're done with that, then there's a second thing that you should install. And that, there's a link for that right there. That is uh, Microsoft XNA Game Studio 4.0. So that's another free program, helps you create games for Windows and Xbox. Uh, is there anything that I'm missing uh, regarding those, those programs, Carrie? Um. No, no, that should be all you need to get started. Um, yeah, if you do have any trouble, then let us know. Just post on the forums, and we'll try and uh, we'll try and get back to you and get it working up for you. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, we have issues. I know during our test run, we had a slight issue with was it Windows 8 that had yeah, some yeah. problems with uh, with that. So if you have Windows 8, you may encounter some issues. It's no problem. Uh, yeah. You know, type in chat, let us know, and uh, and we'll help you along with that. No problem. So once you have those downloaded, then you can get the source code, open it up in Visual C Sharp, and code along right with us. Um, there are also going to be times in the show where we will ask you guys to create things on your own and then send them to us to use. So these could be sound effects, artwork, etc. And the easiest way to submit content to us is to go to www.comgamedev.com and go to the submit content link and then email us. So I will continuously check our inbox during the show. Um, so we'll try and use as many items that are sent to us as possible during the episode. And I see C5 Studio is already installing stuff and making stuff now, so that's really, really awesome. <laughs> so there's going to be a fair bit of downtime between episodes. Um, we are planning to host one episode per month, and we still want to keep the community engaged in game development in the meantime. So at the end of each episode, we will issue a challenge to you guys. The challenges will be to take the source code that we provide on our forums and to create something bigger and better with it. So for an example, we may show you how to create a game that's two player, uh, but we challenge you to create the same game, but for four players, things like that. So you can send us your completed challenges via the same uh, link, the submit content link on comgamedev.com and email it to us and we will look through everything and provide feedback. You can also post it on the forums. Uh, and get other people some feedback if you have issues or need help with stuff or you want advice, you know, post on the forums. People will be there to help as well. I know Carrie will be all over the forums helping people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we will also select some of those pieces to showcase at the beginning of our next episode. So feel free to post your code everywhere. Get help from people. You can work with people if you want to. It doesn't have to be just you. Um, and yeah, we are really excited to see what you guys come up with. 
So last but not least, there is a small pawn game running at the very top right there, right above me. Um, so we want you guys to tweet which side will win and the winning score, and you could win a prize. So tweet uh, the hashtag CGDPong. I will actually type that in chat too. It's going to be first to a thousand, right? Pong. <laughs> first to a thousand, right? Yeah. Let us know which side <laughs> is going to win, and uh, what the final score is, right? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. the final score is. Cool. And then be sure to tweet hashtag CGDPong, and don't forget to tag us too. We are at Com Game Dev on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I tweeted as well. We double tweeted. <laughs> I saw someone else's on Fragdolls, so whoops. But yeah, so uh, you can retweet that as well. We just had a tweet go out, things like that. So just a few other reminders. Sorry, I know I'm talking a lot, but it's a big intro <laughs> for our first episode. So currently, uh, the show is geared towards novice and intermediate developers, or those who don't know anything about game development, but they just want to learn. So it will probably be this way for a while, for at least the first six months. Uh, but then we do hope to branch out to more advanced game code and coding techniques in the future. So sit tight if you're an advanced coder. Bear with us. Come back uh, and, and help people who need help or just wait it out and we'll get to some more advanced code, you know, in the future. Also, final and really important reminder. This show is meant to be interactive. So type questions, type your ideas, comments, whatever in chat, and send us content when we ask for it. We really want to utilize as much of this stuff as possible from you guys. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> and I think Carrie's going to take it away with some explanation on, what was it? Ooh. Game theory development? Theory? Game yeah. development theory? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Things that I don't know about, but I'm going to learn with you guys. Uh -huh. So a lot of things, uh, when, when people get started with, um, with programming and game development, it's just so overwhelming. There's just so much stuff. Um, uh, programming itself is a huge field, and when you think of every game ever made and all the problems solved and solved in game development, um, that's when it really starts to get overwhelming, and that's really not the best way to to approach game development or programming at all. Um, I think the way to do it is just think of something simple, just start simple. Really, that's that's how you do anything, right? If you want to become a, pro a professional athlete, you don't try and uh, try and set yourself a goal as whatever the world record is at the time. You try and uh, you start out with something small, something achievable, and um, you figure out how you're going to get there. And then uh, once you do achieve that, then you move on to the next thing. And that's really the, the best way to approach programming and game development. Um, definitely try and make things smaller, break things down into smaller and smaller problems until it becomes manageable, until you can actually look at something uh, all at the same time and say, OK, this is exactly what I'm working with. Uh, how can I manipulate this to get what I want? Uh, so really, uh, when you think about it, your computer is just a big factory, really. It's got its, um, uh, it's got factory, well, it's got um, garage loading bays, it's got warehouses, it's got offices. Um, it's got the equivalent of all of these, obviously. It's got input and output. It's got uh, a processor. Uh, and these are all things that, uh, that a factory uses, right? They're all, uh, it, it's the same idea as a factory. And if you think of a, a computer, the hardware, as being the physical building of a factory, then um, you can really think of a software as being the people that, are, that work in the factory and the processes that these people do. Probably the most important person in a factory um, is the landlord. And the most important person, well, the most important software on your computer kind of uh, relates well to being a landlord is your operating system. They both kind of do the same thing. They both um, both keep uh, the factory running. They, uh, they allocate all the resources to the tenants. They give the tenants what they need to make their business happen. You know, they try and try and accommodate the tenants as, as best they can. And uh, if need be, if the tenants get a little bit belligerent, then uh, then both the landlord and the operating system have to say, okay, sorry, done with you, out you go. Uh, sometimes that happens. In fact, nearly every crash is the operating system saying, okay, shouldn't have done that, out you go. <laughs> nice. uh, so uh, so really, we just we just need to break down um, break down our code and break down our game into smaller and smaller manageable components and just look at those components one at a time. So uh, let me actually pull up some code. Um, if you guys uh, uh, follow the link on the forums, it's right there. Uh, if I open it up, uh, this is what I get. Can you guys see my screen? 
Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, so it's a little small right now. I can't unfortunately change uh, what's going on on the right here, but I, I can kind of point it out. We've got two things here. We've got uh, CGD Pong, and then we've got uh, CGD Pong content. And these two things are uh, uh, projects inside uh, Visual Studio. Uh, CGD Pong is basically where our code sits, and uh, CGD Pong content is uh, a little bit smaller. There's no code in there. That's all our art resources. Um, so actually, let me focus on CGD Pong content right now, because uh, that one really doesn't take much explanation. And if I can tell you guys some stuff about that, you could really uh, get on your way working with that with us right now. So inside CGD Pong content, we've got these three uh, PNG files. And PNG files, uh, uh, like most art people know, that they're just uh, it's a standard format for, for images. Um, and each one is related to something in our game. If I hit F5, it'll build the code and run the game. Let me do that real quick. And you can see we've got a very simple, very bland uh, Pong game right now. And I can control it with O and M on one side, and then Z and Q on the other side. It's a very simple Pong game that we're going to be working with. This is just something that I threw together, um, and we're going to be playing around with this. And Carrie, this is the source code. Like this game is what you get if you download our source code from our website. And yeah. Just open it up, point blank. Yeah. That's that's what it's going to come out looking like. So you already have the yeah. game ready to go, and you can follow along with us. Okay, so I'm going to close that for now. Yeah, if you guys download the source code and download uh, the uh, the software we've mentioned in chat so far, uh, and you run it right away, that's what you get right out of the box. So these are the three PNG files that make that up. We've got background.png, ball.png, and paddle.png. So uh, the background is just a big black rectangle. I'm very, very creative, and so I, I made this all by myself, this big black rectangle for our game. Um, then we've got our ball, which is just a white rectangle. And then we've got our paddle, which is a longer white rectangle. Oh, hold on. <laughs> let me let me change really quickly so people can see that. Can you open that one more time? Uh, yeah. Um, so there our we go. Yeah. Yeah. This is our ball. It's just a 15 by 15 white square, and then our paddle is a 15 by 100 um, white rectangle. And then for right now, our background is a 1024 by 768 black rectangle. And you guys can go ahead and, and actually make some PNG files and submit them to us at our email address. And um, hopefully, we'll get them in. Might, by the time we get to a, a little further into the stream, we'll check our email. And we'll start replacing these with art that you guys make. So um, yeah, really quickly, let me um, verify what the sizes are for those art pieces so we can put them in chat. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so if we want to do a new background for the game. Yeah, the background is uh, 1024 by 768. OK. And then for the for the ball? The ball, the ball that I have is 15 by 15. 15 uh, by 15? Yep. Yeah, and the paddle is 15 by 100. But the interesting thing about the, the ball and the paddle is the way I coded it is that uh, it does its collision based on the sizes of those images. So you could technically give us any size image and uh, you could really actually change the gameplay by giving us huge paddles. Yeah. <laughs> or a huge ball. <laughs> or a huge ball. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, if you guys give us uh, PNG files, we do support uh, Alpha Channel if it's a 32-bit PNG. Uh, we can support Alpha on that uh, if you guys are uh, artistically inclined and want to work on that. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll throw them into the game if you email them to us. Yeah. All right. So uh, with that, let's uh, let's look at some of the code. So inside this CGD Pong, anything that ends in a .cs, any any uh, file that ends in the .cs extension is a code file. Uh, but really, the only important one, the the only one that we really need to play around with today, is this Pong game Pong game type .cs. So if I double click that, it will open here, and we can look at the code. And I'll just make that big so you can see it. So this is our code here. Can you make it maybe one size bigger? Is that better? <laughs> That's like super awesome. 
Okay, so um, <laughs> it's it's pretty tough to program if you're sitting in front of a monitor like this, so you'll have to bear with me. But uh, the important thing is you guys can see oh, it. Oh, that, you know what? Well, that, that's actually like much bigger. Wow. Pull it down some. But just once, yeah. Bring it down one size, and hopefully that will uh, work. Very, yeah, that's, that should yeah. be good. Yeah. It's in, in, in the stream? Okay, cool. That should be good. Actually, anyone in stream, type in chat. Let me know if you guys can see that code okay. Can you read what's on my screen? I'm going to scroll around a little bit. Yeah, just give them a couple of seconds to make sure that they can see. Looks great. Yep, it's perfect. Code looks great. Awesome. Okay, we're good. All right, so at the top of the file here, um, you can see there's a lot of stuff that's uh, that's in green here. And there's a couple of links in there as well. But uh, but uh, this this text here that's green, um, you can see every line that's green actually starts out with at least two slashes. Up here, we've got more than two, but at least two slashes. Whenever we see these two slashes, uh, this is a comment. So anything after this is going to be just ignored by the computer. Everything everything in green is for us to read. This is human notes, just written in, in very human English. <laughs> so wherever I've, I've done this, uh, it's something for you guys to read to understand what's going on, or something Sometimes I get lost and I have to read to understand what's going on as well. But yeah, this is all mostly uh, all the green stuff is mostly there for you to uh, to understand what's going on. So like I said before, the, the easiest thing to start learning code, the easiest way is to start breaking it down into smaller and smaller chunks that you can look at individually and uh, and just focus on one chunk at a time. And that's really what I've done here. Uh, this namespace, anything where you see like a curly brace is something being broken down into something smaller. So uh, a namespace is a way of saying, uh, namespace uh, CGD is a way of saying, OK, all our CGD code is going in here. So uh, outside of here, we, we've got these using statements. And this is where Microsoft puts together some pieces for us to use. Uh, and we could actually find those files well, I don't know if Microsoft actually gives us these files to change, but somewhere these <laughs> files, just like how we have our CGD file, somewhere there's uh, there's these other files, these other code sections that we really don't care about right now. We just assume that they work and um, and we get on with life and we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. inside here, we've got a class, which is yet another way of breaking down uh, code. Uh, class is uh, kind of like a, a virtual object. Um, Whenever you see a class, it, it generally refers to something you can actually picture in your head. Uh, in this case, the class is Pong game type. Like if I tell you we're making a Pong game, automatically you think, oh, what, what does a Pong game look like? What does a Pong game have? How does a Pong game differ to other games? Um, so that's that's what this object is. It's a Pong game. Um, we could make objects for, for the other things inside the game, like the paddle and, and the ball. But I didn't want to overcomplicate it for right now. The, uh, Pong is a pretty simple game, so I didn't want to have too many classes in here for you. Um, but we do have things inside this class, these variables. Uh, these are things that change throughout the game. And we can actually uh, give them initial starting values. Um, like For instance, we've got um, paddle speed. This one's pretty self-explanatory what it does. But uh, just to show you, if I change this from 250 to, uh, I don't know, let's change it to 2,500. <laughs> if I run yeah. the... Whoa, super fast. <laughs> I it's can't even, like... Too uh, hot. hot. <laughs> you can't even play that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, if no, I... No. <laughs> It's tap a key, it it goes it goes crazy. So uh, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that and change it back to 250. Uh, this one is another. This is another variable. Paddle margin. This one's uh, probably not quite as obvious what it does right away. So uh, let's try and make it obvious by just changing this value here to uh, I don't know. Let's go with 400 and see what this does. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> that just looks so silly. Yeah, the paddle margin is the distance, basically how much space between the edge of the screen and the paddles. So uh, if I make it higher, it pulls the paddles into the middle. So we'll put that back at fifty. If you guys have the source code, feel free to play around with these and uh, make your own version of Pong that 
that is as fast or as slow as you want. And uh, there's there's other things in here as well that we can manipulate. Uh, texture, like we've got our background, background texture here. Um, uh, this is another variable, uh, but we don't set it up here. We've actually got a section of code we set that up in, and I'll show you that in a second. And it's basically the same with the uh, with the the ball textures uh, and the positions and velocity of the ball. Ball speed. This is another one. That, this is another one that's fun to play with. It a thousand, and uh, and we've got a super fast. Yeah, now now it is completely unplayable. <laughs> There's no way I can get my paddle to hit that. <laughs> Too fast. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to set that back to 400. But that's just an example. You can make your game unplayable by playing playing with these values and just making them completely unrealistic. OK, so I'm going to scroll down to uh, some of our functions we've got. We've got this setup function. So a function is uh, another way of breaking down code. But uh, functions are always called at a certain time. Like this setup function, uh, we've got our curly braces again, open and close. So anything we write in between these two curly braces is going to happen at the start of the game. Just as soon as the game loads, it's going to happen then, and then it'll never happen again. So this is where we want to load all our textures onto the graphics card. Um, the update function, uh, everything inside these curly braces here is going to happen inside the uh, the update function. Um, and these, this is going to happen. Uh, multiple times a frame, uh, well, multiple times for every visible frame. This is going to happen as fast as a computer can. It's just going to happen over and over and over again. Um, and every frame, it's going to update the ball. It's going to update the paddles. Um, inside here, I've got two more functions. I've actually written these, the update ball and update paddles, to break it down even further so that we've got an area where we can just do all our ball up updates and all our paddle updates. And so it doesn't make this function, uh, it doesn't make it grow too big to the point where we can't understand it. Okay, Inside our draw function, this is another one. This one happens every frame. This is what happens every time we try and draw the game. So probably 30 or 60 frames a second, most draw calls are, um, will we'll actually hit this, and it will render everything to the screen. Whereas the update is as many times as we can. This is generally restricted to 30 or 60 frames a second. OK, to string, this is, uh, let me run the game again real quick. You can see the title of the window is com game dev pong game. If I close this and I change what's inside these quotes here, my game. I run it again. Now it says com game dev my game. <laughs> <laughs> really all that does, it's just a, a little bit of customization, I suppose. Um, so I'm going to just change it back to Pong game. Um, but yeah, if you change it, you can feel free to change this value here to whatever, change it to Joey's game or or Sally's game or whatever you want to change it to, whatever you want the window to display, you can change that there. OK, uh, update ball I already kind of spoke about. Um, it's going to happen as quick as the computer can. Uh, it does some math here to do some collisions. Won't really get into the math today. Uh, just know that everything inside here uh, relates to the ball colliding with um, with various different things, with, with the paddles or with the, um, or with the uh, out of bounds. Uh, paddles, again, update paddles. Uh, this is where we check our input. And uh, we take it from there. We, we move a paddle if we want to based on whatever buttons the player is pushing. Um, but that's pretty much the only thing that we do inside here. Reset game. This is a function that's going to call every time we start the game over. So when the ball goes out of bounds or when, uh, when we start the game, it's going to happen. Um, so really, whenever we need the ball put back into play is when we call reset game. And that's it. That's all the functions that we have inside this game. So our code, depending on what we want to do, if we want to do something that only happens when the ball goes out of play, like, say, update the scores, if we have scores, we could update them inside this reset here, or whenever this reset gets called. Um, yeah, uh, that's really all there is to this Pong game. Um, so really, I, I suppose the rest of it is, uh, what do we want to do with it? What, what should we make? Yeah, you guys, um, anyone in chat or watching, you know, if you guys want to see us do something, if you want to see us 
I don't know, mess with the size of the ball or change up the paddles or if we want to, I don't know, what else can we do? Add a score counter, um, add multiple balls. I'm sure we could do that too. <laughs> I don't think we're going to develop a, a whole different game, but, <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, let us let us know what you guys want to try out, and we'll show you how to do it. There's an awful lot of code there, and hopefully you guys have been able to download the programs and follow up with the um with the code from our website. All right, so we have a couple of options already in chat. Someone has asked if we can speed up the ball. If you want to show that real quick, I know that's a pretty easy change to make. Um, yeah. So inside. Uh, Inside our game here, we have uh, this ball speed 400. Uh, we can make this quicker. We can, did I, what was it I put it at? Was it 1,000 I put it at before and it was just unplayable? <laughs> 600. 600 is, 600 is faster, but just about playable. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's pretty fast, but not unplayable. Yeah. So yeah, we, we can just, Tweak the ball, uh, tweak the speed of it as much as we want, and um, and that's how we do it, just with this value here. So pretty easy. That's something you guys can change on your own too. Um, and then there's another there's another option that people in the chat really want to have happen. Um, multiple balls. They would like to see if we could add a couple <laughs> of them. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we can do with that. <laughs> okay. Um, so what we probably want to do, if we're dealing with multiple balls, um, we want to do an array, I'd imagine. So let's uh, let's set up an array. Uh, so I've I've not actually done anything in here with arrays yet. Um, but if I do um, if I do square braces like this, they become um, it becomes an array, which is a collection of variables as opposed to just one variable. So I'm going to do the same here. And we need to actually create these arrays. So I'm going to, I'm going to just put two for everyone. So we're going to have two of everything. So we'll do two balls and, and, and two ball textures, two ball positions and so forth. Um, so we need. Oh my gosh! Can... Oh no! You know I'm gonna save that. I just had an idea. I'm gonna save that idea. I'm gonna write that down. That's a good idea. Okay. Hopefully I don't forget to say that once you're done showing us how to make these. And now, really, what we need to do everywhere where we have where we reference the ball, we've got to tell it which ball, basically. Um, so ball texture sub zero, and then ball texture sub one. So we basically told that both balls use the same ball texture. Uh, inside our update, we're going to have quite a bit of work to do in our update ball section. Um, in our, let's see. In our, draw we're gonna have to draw two balls um this is where it gets filthy right <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll actually do uh we'll do this inside a for loop uh we'll go with ball yeah ball position length 